for the introduction and uh, I appreciate this amazing opportunity. Um, I'm uh, very excited about giving a talk at the place I'm always uh, uh, watching on YouTube, uh, so uh, I'm uh, very proud of it. So today um, I want to talk about uh, KPT creation in uh, three and higher dimensions and we discuss uh, some interesting relationship between uh, stochasticity creation and KPT creation. And this talk is based on joint work with uh, Stefan Jung from Gakshuin University and also uh, a work with, uh, with uh, Kulemon Kosko and uh, Makoto Nakashima will appear many times, so uh, Kulemon is bonjour. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> and uh, Makoto is uh, not here, okay. <laughs> okay, anyway, so... Uh, it doesn't work. Okay, so this is the plan of my talk. Uh, so first I want to talk about the background of the KPD equation. And then uh, I'll discuss uh, previous research around SHE and KPD equation. And finally, uh, I want to talk about uh, our main results. Okay, then uh, background. So let me show you uh, uh, one uh, uh, important phenomenon uh, called liquid penetration. So sorry, animation doesn't work. So uh, okay, <laughs> I knew that. Okay, uh, so this is uh, <laughs> okay. It doesn't work. Uh, but uh, I, I poured water over the towel, and then uh, you know you can see the okay. Let's imagine that you can see the evolution of the wetting region, right? And this is called uh, liquid penetration. And uh, if you look at the boundary of the wetting region, then uh, you can regard it as uh, uh, interface growing. And uh, also it is very important to note that, you know, this is a random process because if you conduct this experiment several times, then this behavior changes from time to time. So in that sense, we call it uh, random interface growing. Okay, and I list some uh, other random, random interface growth models. So the top one is liquid penetration, and the second one is uh, paper burning, the infected population, uh, cell colony, coffee links, and so on, and so on. Okay. And these, okay, they used to be uh, studied separately, independently, but uh, there was a breakthrough in uh, 1986 by uh, three physicists, uh, Kader Parizan, and they predicted the following. So many kinds of uh, random interrupt growth models can be described by only one equation called the KPG equation. And th this is a KPG equation. Okay, just in case I'll write down. Um, this is uh, remarkable because, you know, these phenomena follow different rules microscopically, but macroscopically they follow the same equation. And we call it the universality because uh, it, it's independent of the microscopic uh, rules. And the set of uh, models that uh, are expected to behave like a solution to the KPZ equation is called KPZ universality class. And we list uh, some uh, models in uh, KPZ class in mathematics. And it is uh, okay, divided into two subgroups uh, called uh, exactly solvable, mod solvable models and unsolvable models. And exactly solvable models include uh, one dimensional KPZ equation, uh, TASEP, uh, last passage per equation for. So, uh, exponential distribution and six, six vertex models and so on and so on. Okay. And in these models, uh, we can write the solution kind of ex explicitly. So we know uh, many things in these models, but it is known that uh, most of the models are unsolvable. Uh, and it includes uh, first passage power correlation, uh, polymers, uh, last passage power correlation for general distributions and ballistic de depositions. And moreover, um, it, should, it should be noted that uh, any model is so far unsolvable for two and higher dimensional KPT equations. 
And it is known that the construction of the solution to the KPG equation in two and higher dimension is very hard. And in this situation, I want to uh, study uh, the KPG equation and you know, construct the solution and uh, study properties in higher dimensional case. Okay, this is uh, my motivation. And okay, uh, then uh, let's uh, look at the KPG equation. So this is a KPG equation, so fix beta. And the le left hand side is a time derivative, and the right hand side is composed of uh, three terms, so Laplacian and Gradian squared, and noise. Okay. <laughs> and so the noise term is uh, called space time white noise. Th this is kind of uh, identical independent Gaussian, something like that. Uh, so this is a random term, and that's why uh, we call it uh, uh, stochast stochastic PDE. <coughs> and, okay, I want to explain these terms on the right-hand side. The, the first term is called uh, relaxation. It means that uh, the interface gets uh, flattened and flattened. Okay. So this is a uh, typical picture of uh, relaxation. The second one is called lateral growth. And it means that uh, the interface grows, but the shape doesn't change so much. Okay, the final term is called noise. And uh, okay, in this case, uh, you know, the noise is, the direction is random. And also the, the strength is also random. So they are located uh, independently. So this, okay, this uh, term cause, uh, uh, okay, this term uh, makes that problem very hard. Okay, the, the, the model is clear, sort of. Okay, okay uh, in this slide, I want to explain about why solving the KPC equation is very hard. So it is well known that uh, the noise term, C, is not a function, just a distribution. So it is not that difficult to imagine that the solution H is not a function itself. So, okay, so we can uh, take a derivative for distribution, but uh, we cannot consider multiplication of uh, distributions. So the problem is uh, the second term, nonlinear term, doesn't make sense in mathematics. So this is uh, uh, one of the difficult problems. To solve it, uh, okay, a naive structure is, uh, the, uh, so naive uh, strategy is the following. So first uh, we modify the noise. So we consider smooth noise instead. Then with this smooth noise, uh, we can consider a modified KPZ equation. Then by PD theory, uh, we can find a solution, right? And finally, uh, we switch off the uh, smoothing effect. Okay, let's demonst demonstrate that. Um, so first, let uh, phi be a smooth uh, and compactly supported function. And modify the white noise C like this. So this is a convolution of phi and C. And so C epsilon, so it is a, uh, uh, okay, so you know that C epsilon converges to C itself uh, in, the, in distribution sense. So instead of the original KPG equation, we consider the KPG equation with this noise, C epsilon, okay? The question is, uh, does H epsilon converge to a non-trivial random function? The answer is uh, no. So, so, you know, H epsilon actually diverges uh, to minus infinity. So it's uh, very similar to uh, a problem in quantum field theory. So that's why uh, we have to modify the equation more. So we introduce new parameters. Uh, <coughs> So beta epsilon, c epsilon, 
So here you put beta epsilon minus phi epsilon. Okay. And the new question is uh, can we take uh, the parameters beta epsilon and phi epsilon such that uh, h epsilon converges to something, non trivial limit? And in this talk, uh, we will choose beta epsilon and phi epsilon in the following rules. So we call that phi epsilon is defined by this. And uh, for fixed beta hat, uh, beta epsilon is defined by this. So if uh, the dimension is 1, then beta epsilon is just a, f a constant. But uh, if the, the, the dimension is 2, then uh, we have to put log epsilon inverse like that. Then it, it converges to 0. And if the dimension is 3 and higher, then we have to put epsilon to the uh, d minus 2 half power. So in this case, the beta epsilon uh, goes to 0 polynomially. And finally, we take c epsilon like this. Okay. Then, you can ask yourself uh, why we take these scalings. And so I want to tell you two reasons. Uh, this is the only scaling uh, that has succeeded in mathematics so far, if you consider two and higher dimensional KPZ equation. Second, in these uh, scalings, in these choice of parameters, the model, KPZ equation, is naturally related to direct polymers. And that's why we choose this. But uh, there are other choices, parameters that the physicists uh, suggest, uh, such as uh, family big uh, scalings. So, okay, keep in mind that it's not a unique uh, choice of scalings, but uh, it's a kind of natural choice of scalings. Okay, then let me explain about uh, some previous researches uh, for 1D and 2D case. Uh, for 1D, it is well known that uh, you know, uh, we, can, you know, we can construct a solution. In fact, for any beta hat, okay, sorry, larger than zero, so positive, H epsilon converges to a non-trivial uh, random function. Okay. Okay, since it, uh, it has appeared uh, many times, I will, I will safely skip it. Okay, the dimension two case is, uh, has a, a kind of transition. Okay, and in this case, if beta hat is less than one, then H epsilon converges to uh, some random variable for fixed t and x. And if beta hat is larger than one, then uh, H epsilon diverges. Okay. And they have studied more, so if a beta hat is less than one, then uh, they showed that the fluctuation, I mean H, H epsilon minus uh, expectation, um, converges to uh, Edward Wilkinson limit. And if uh, beta hat is one, then E to the H epsilon, converges to something called the critical stochastic heat flow. But uh, the limit is uh, not a function, so you cannot take logarithm to recover the limit of H epsilon. So, so, so in this case, uh, so critical case, beta hat is one case, uh, the, the, the problem is still open for KPZ equation itself. But the e to the H epsilon, uh, then uh, the limit exists. Okay, but uh, this is not related to our main results, so uh, 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 let me skip it. Um, so before going into the uh, three and higher dimensional case, I want to explain about a relationship between the KPZ equation and direct polymers. Okay, so, so first we take u epsilon like this. So this is called the hop call uh, uh, transformation. Uh, then uh, the following equations are equivalent. The first one is uh, just uh, the KPZ equation, so this one, with uh, some parameters beta epsilon, epsilon. 
The second one is uh, called the uh, stochastic equation. So then Tu is uh, plus uh, beta epsilon. Okay. So they are equivalent uh, in uh, for the relation U is into this. Okay. So it means that once you can prove, so you can uh, construct the solution to the SHE, then uh, there's a good chance to uh, uh, get the solution to the KPZ equation. And moreover, you know, you can apply a, a feynman katz formula to this uh, SHE, because this is a linear equation, so you can apply it. Then uh, you can get a very good expression uh, called a polymer expression. Uh, so, okay, I know that uh, all French and all Japanese have known uh, polymer models, so uh, I don't have to explain about it too much, but uh, uh, okay, uh, so, the point is that, you know, in the exponential, um, the integral of uh, random environments along with the Brownian motion appears, and this is called the uh, uh, polymer Hamiltonian. And then since we take expectation, uh, this is uh, regarded as a partition function of a continuum uh, polymer models. And that, that, that's why a KPZ equation is uh, related to direct polymers. Okay, yeah, this is a Hamiltonian of a direct polymer. And okay, in this slide, uh, I want to introduce a weak disorder regime, you know, it, which appears in the title. So. For simplicity, we assume that u epsilon is one, so the initial uh, condition is flat, and we take t to be epsilon to the minus two. Then, as in the previous slide, you know that u epsilon one x has a polymer expression like this, and we define the phi t, the inside of the expectation. And it is easy to check that phi, phi s is a martingale, so you can apply a martingale uh, theory. And uh, if you apply a martingale convergent theorem, you know that uh, dt, so dt is uh, expectation of phi t, uh, converges to something, okay? some, some random variable. And using the infinity, you can define a uh, weak disorder regime. Okay. So there are two parameters, beta L2 and beta C, such that if beta hat is less than beta L2, then dt, the previous partition function of the continu continuum uh, polymer models, is uh, L2 bounded. And if beta hat is less than beta C, then the limit is almost surely positive. And if beta hat is larger than beta c, then dt converges to zero. And uh, the second regime is called weak disorder. And the last one is called strong disorder. Okay. And it is believed that uh, beta L2 is strictly less than beta c. And I, I think in this model it is still open, but in this discrete model it was proved. So uh, I think uh, we can follow the, their arguments to uh, prove this. Uh, so uh, essentially uh, we have uh, three regimes, L2, weak, and strong disorder regime. Okay. okay, then, then uh, let's uh, consider the asymptotic of the solution to the SHE and KPZ equation. <coughs> okay, so u epsilon is, is the solution to the uh, okay, modified SHE and consider the general uh, initial conditions, then u bar is uh, defined by this. Then 
we can prove that if uh, beta hat is less than beta c, so in, in the weak disorder regime, u epsilon converges to u bar in L1 sense. Okay? And if uh, beta hat is larger than beta c hat, then u epsilon converges to zero. Okay? So we can, we can say that in the weak disorder regime, u epsilon converges to u bar in distributional sense, but in the strong disorder regime, u epsilon converges to zero. And okay, the, the first result, uh, uh, okay, uh, so Makaji Shamos Dai Tuni proved uh, the first result for an uh, L2 regime, and, and then Kosuko Nakashima Nakajima uh, extended the result up to a beta c hat. So, so just to make sure, so you bar it's uh, Edward Wilkinson uh, and just uh, the Brownian uh, without interaction. That's uh, that's what you you want. And this one? Yes, you bar. You bar is uh, not Edward Wilkinson. Just uh, uh, th this is uh, you know deterministic function. And and in that next slide, Edward Wilkinson will appear. So okay, this is a kind of law of large numbers. So uh, not fluctuation. Okay, because u epsilon is just uh, you know partial function. So uh, then next, let's consider. Okay, sorry, this is a, okay. The, the problem is you know the limit of u epsilon. The limit is u bar in this case is is not uh, random. So just uh, deterministic function. And originally, you know, we looked for a uh, random interface growth models. So it's not something. Uh, it's not enough. So, uh, and uh, remember that, you know, KPZ equation should arise from the fluctuation. So in that sense, it's natural to think about the fluctuation also. So the next result is about the fluctuation. <coughs> okay, so in the previous slide, we proved that u epsilon uh, converges to u bar. So we consider the difference between u epsilon minus u bar. Then in the L2 regime, this converges to uh, the solution to the Edward Wilkinson equation. <clears throat> okay, so in that sense, you know, in the L2 regime, uh, the fluctuation of SHE converges to uh, Edward Wilkinson equation. And note that uh, this <coughs> gamma, so gamma appears uh, in Edward Wilkinson equation, so this gamma diverges as beta hat goes to beta L2. So in that sense, uh, this result holds only inside the L2 regime. So outside L2, we don't know anything about it. Okay, this is a SHE fluctuation and the, 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 okay, this is a slide for the fluctuation of KPZ. Okay, for KPZ, something similar happens. So if a beta hat is less than beta L2, so L2 regime, then the fluctuation of, uh, the fluctuation of KPZ equation converges to Edward Wilkinson equation in this case also. But it has a bit different form, but uh, okay, almost the same. And actually, this is a Gaussian process. Uh, so U2 is a kind of Gaussian process. So uh, they are kind of very similar. Okay, maybe I should explain wha why I cited four papers. Uh, the first two papers uh, consider the fluctuation of KPZ for beta hat small enough. And the last two papers were published uh, simultaneously and independently. The last two papers uh, uh, extended the result up to beta L2. Okay. Actually, um, okay, maybe I should uh, uh, call them so Magnen, Antorbaga, Dumlap, uh, Gu, Rizek, Zaituni, and Likonis, uh, Zigoras. And CNN is not a broadcasting company. CNN is uh, uh, Costco, Nakajima, Nakashima, yes. Uh, okay, uh, uh, and uh, the continuous result is actually from a discrete model, but uh, okay, essentially their techniques can be work, can be applicable to continuous models. Uh, that's why I, I included I include it. 
Okay, anyway, this is uh, the situation for the KPZ in higher dimensional case. And what we know is, so what we all know is uh, inside the L2 regime. But, you know, beta L2 is strictly less than beta C. So a natural question is, uh, can we extend the re this result up to beta C, right? But, but still weak disorder, but, uh, you know, uh, it's a bit st still mysterious. So, okay, from now on, uh, I want to focus on uh, this regime. I mean, uh, inside the week, but outside the uh, L2 regime. Okay, this is the main result. Uh, I have uh, 25 minutes, okay, great. So, our main result discusses the uh, relation between SHE and KPZ equation in weak disorder regime. And I believe that uh, our main result is, uh, okay, so our main result is only stated in uh, discrete polymer models, but uh, we believe that our techniques can be applicable to continuous models also. Uh, but anyway, uh, we only focus on discrete model that I'm gonna introduce later. <coughs> okay, this is uh, the slide for discrete polymer model. So let omega i n be uh, i i d random variables, and lambda beta is the log uh, generating moment function. And we define the partition function by this. So in this case, the Hamiltonian is just sum of omega k x k. So x k is a simple random walk. Okay. And for simplicity, we write z n like this. Okay. And finally, uh, we define the weak disorder regime. Okay. And I think it's a good time to compare on uh, discrete model and continuous polymer models. Okay. This is a slide. So recall that you know U epsilon has a polymer representation, okay, and uh, by Kolhoff transformation, uh, you know H epsilon solved the KPZ equation. And let's compare discrete model and continuous model. So. So in discrete model, the Hamiltonian is just uh, the summation of uh, random environments. And in continuous models, uh, we integrate the random environments, but no, not that different. And partial function is, uh, okay, uh, we use a simple random walk for the, for the partial function. And uh, for the continuous models, uh, we use a brand new motion, but they are uh, kind of equivalent. And uh, weak disorder regime can be, uh, can be defined by the same way. Okay. So, so they are kind of, uh, there are so one-to-one -one correspondence somehow. In, somehow. <coughs> okay, then, uh, uh, let me introduce some works by uh, Jung. Um, the, the first one is a tail exponent. So P star is the supremum of P such that uh, the N has a pith moment, the finite, finite pith moment. <coughs> and he proved that in the weak disorder regime, P star is at least D plus two divided by D. Okay, and moreover, he showed that from certain class of weight distributions, uh, for example, finite support uh, distributions, uh, this relation is, uh, uh, so he proved this relation. So beta, beta less than beta C is equivalent to uh, P star is strictly larger than D plus two divided by two D. Yes. <coughs> So 
Okay, then uh, let's consider the fluctuation of SHE. And we introduce a new parameter of C, defined by this. So P star is a tail exponent. <coughs> and we call C the fluctuation exponent. And he showed that uh, if you consider the fluctuation of SHE, okay, the fluctuation of SHE is uh, now defined by this, uh, because this is dis discrete. And he showed that uh, the fluctuation is of order n to the minus C with hyperability. I should write them. Okay. This is a SH fluctuation, and this has a, a order xc in this case. But still, we don't know the scaling limit of this object. <coughs> but we know the order uh, of the fluctuation of SHE. Okay. Okay, uh, this is uh, our main result. So the assumption is uh, the following. So P star is uh, larger than D plus two over D. So this is equivalent to uh, beta less than beta C. So we call it a subcritical regime. And second, we assume that omega has a compact support. But this is a kind of technical, uh, this is a technical condition. So you, you can forget about it. But the first, the first condition is uh, essential. Then we define the fluctuation of KPZ by this. So it's quite similar to SHE, but uh, is the same at here, log Cn x minus x plus h. Then our result is the following. So chi n minus kappa n, so the difference between SH fluctuation and the KPZ equation is at most n to the minus c minus delta. So there is an extra term. And from this, uh, we have uh, two important consequences. Uh, the first one is uh, the fluctuation of KPZ has uh, the same order, so n to the minus C. So in this case, uh, epsilon, uh, so we can take epsilon small enough. So we know that kappa, kappa nf is uh, of order by n, n to the minus C. <coughs> and so using this result, uh, uh, we have, uh, so the difference between the fluctuations uh, is negligible compared with uh, chi n and uh, xi, uh, sorry, kappa n and uh, uh, chi n. Yes. So, so this is uh, our main, main result, and that, that, that's why uh, we call it the equivalence of the fluctuation, because uh, the, the difference can be negligible for two fluctuations. <coughs> Okay, great. Uh, the, the main result is clear so far. Okay. I will have uh, 15 minutes. Okay, yeah, that's great. 
OK, so, so, so here I want to explain about wh why I was surprised. Um, yes, yeah, so I want to convince you uh, that I'm surprised. <laughs> no, not, not convince you to be surprised, but uh, OK. Uh, so for beta, so for beta in this region, uh, for if a beta larger than beta 2 and less than beta c, then a natural prediction is uh, the SHE fluctuation converges to a stable type distribution because, because so Zn doesn't have a second moment, just a p moment, and p is a strictly less than 2. So it is natural to believe that this uh, converges to some uh, stable type distribution. Okay. But for KPZ, okay, so KPZ is uh, you know sum of log Zn, right? And uh, we have a second final second moment for log Zn. Okay. And also we have uh, some asymptotic uh, uh, independence for this object. So we can prove this. So they, they are not trivial, but uh, we can prove them in, in the weak di disorder regime. So my original belief was uh, so kappa and f, uh, the KP fluctuation uh, converges to Gaussian with, with some different scalings uh, uh, compared with the L2 regime. But uh, it, I, I thought it, it, it converges to Gaussian process. And, and that, that's why I asked Stefan to, to attack this problem because uh, he has uh, prepared many important tools. Uh, so so I, I thought that we can do that. But uh, the answer is uh, it was not the case. And uh, okay, I remember that I was really reluctant about it. Uh, I think Stefan was not, but uh, I was uh, really reluctant on it. But f finally, we found the uh, uh, important relation between them. Okay, then uh, I have, uh, uh, I think, 15 minutes left. No, less than that. Ten, ten, ten minutes. Ten minutes, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, okay, so from now on, uh, I want to uh, uh, explain about the proof. Uh, so the main target is this one, so rho nf. So first, lk is a k to the one eighth, and eky is uh, defined by this. And rho nf is uh, a bit complicated uh, structure, but uh, okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so rho n is like this. <laughs> I can't explain more. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, so our target is uh, okay. First, we prove uh, chi n f is approximately uh, is approximately rho n f, and uh, chi n f uh, a kappa n f is approximately uh, rho n f. Uh. Okay, so for S H E, it's not that difficult actually. Um, so we use a uh, multi-ingate decomposition. Okay. Okay, the, the second line is a multi-ingate decomposition. And from the second line to the third line, we replace K by LK. So we can do that because uh, okay. Uh, Okay, uh, this is uh, inside the bracket. Uh, so if uh, if f is one, <coughs> then this is just a partition function, actually, like like like, uh, like this, n y. Okay. And in this case, we know that uh, this is approximately uh, this partition function. ZK, yes. So ZK and DLK are, are close because they converge to the same limit, so uh, we can approximate that then. <coughs> and you replace, you replace also X by K? X by K. Yes. 
Z L K K Y. A K Y is the starting point of this partition function in this case, so this case. we don't replace it. So this is just a row of large numbers, so uh, it's rel relatively easy. And before going into the KPZ fluctuations, uh, I'm going to introduce two of them, uh, two in important ingredients. Okay, first one is called the uh, local limit theorem. Okay, uh, and first uh, we define the point-to-point partition -point function uh, defined by this. So Z and X is uh, Th this region means, uh, so we take expectation here. So this is x and y. <coughs> and we take ln by this one. Then he showed, uh, so Jung showed that the n can be somehow factorized. Okay. So the n is approximately the ln times the ln backward. And this is a not that difficult to be convinced because uh, okay, um, well this is a, okay. This is a point-to-point -point partition function, and uh, this is a product. Okay. So by kind of homogenization, we can forget about. Uh, this random environment, then uh, we can get uh, this uh, uh, product. So this is a kind of local limit theorem. And it was proved uh, by Sinai in the L2 region first. And, and then Vincent Vargas uh, simplified the proof, but still inside L2. Then recently, uh, Junka extended the result uh, up to uh, beta C. <coughs> okay, so th this is a very nice result. And uh, the second ingredient is a lower tail concentration. It means that uh, the probability that Zn is very small is also small. <coughs> okay, so using these ingredients, inside the box, uh, we have the following uh, approximation. So first we define the Gibbs measure, the polymer measure, mu n x y, by this. So this is just a Gibbs measure with respect to the uh, polymer, uh, polymer uh, Hamiltonian. And by the local limit theorem, the k uh, is approximately uh, a product and ZLK and ZK converge to the same object. So, okay, first ZKXY is replaced by uh, ZLKX and ZLKKY. Uh, second, ZLKX and ZK minus X can cancel because they, 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 you know, they converge to the same limit, so uh, they, they cancel. So somehow we have this expression. Uh, this is an important conse consequence of the local limit theorem. And using this, it's not that difficult to uh, convince you uh, KPZ fluctuation is equivalent to uh, SH fluctuation. <coughs> okay, as before, uh, we use a martingale decomposition. Like this, uh, it's a bit mess, but uh, uh, we can organize it uh, by using a Taylor expansion. So zkx divided by zk minus one has a good expression using a Gibbs measure uh, like this. And uh, using Taylor expansion, somehow uh, we can forget about uh, the second and higher terms. Then uh, the right hand side is the first order term. <coughs> okay, so using this approximation, we have the third line. Okay, uh, this, this is just an uh, uh, expansion, so uh, 
you can calculate it yourself. And recall that uh, mu k has uh, a very nice uh, uh, expression uh, approximately. So we substitute this approximation into the, uh, the la last one. So you know that the last one has uh, uh, gives measure, so we substitute this approximation. <coughs> then we can get uh, rho and f uh, finally. And th that's why uh, uh, that's why the, the conclusion is, uh, you know, chi and f is approximately kappa and f. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you for your kind attention. Thanks for a beautiful talk. Other questions or comments? So, do you believe you can uh, push your, uh, your approach up to uh, beta hat c, maybe not with a, uh, a, a delta like in your theorem, but beta. maybe obtain a tightness uh, result? Uh, so, you mean beta and call beta c? <laughs> beta and uh, call beta hat c. So, I remember that you mentioned that there is still a critical, uh, there is still a limit for. Uh, for so, you are talking about two different case? Ah, yeah, maybe it was in the continuum case, yeah. So. <coughs> yes. Yes, but uh, yeah, okay, it was continuous. Yes. yes. But for instance, do you know how uh, how your delta? Uh, do you have an, an estimate on your delta in your, in your theorem when uh, it goes to beta c? Ah, uh, in gamma. Um, no, I meant the um, the exponent. So you, your result is a uh, ah, kind of concentration okay. result. Uh, with uh, n to the minus xi minus uh, delta, delta, I was as asking about this delta. Uh, we have uh, some explicit expression for delta, but I, I think it's not sharp. Uh, and uh, okay, this delta depends on the local limit theorem, actually. So uh, if uh, you have a sharp, uh, okay, so, so this delta depends on how lk how you choose LK in the local limit theorem. Uh, yeah, this one. So here we take LK to be n to the one eighth, and that's why, uh, uh, so we, we, we have uh, some explicit delta, but I think uh, this choice is not uh, sharp. I think we can take it longer. Then uh, you can improve delta, but uh, I don't know what uh, is the optimal uh, delta, so uh, maybe we can try it. Go ahead. Yeah, maybe on the same question, because uh, in dimension three, three uh, Jung and uh, Lacan just proved very recently that at beta c, weak disorder still holds, right? Yes, yes. And so, so can you push uh, also this kind of estimates to the critical point? Yeah, it's um, the Okay, the, the, the main problem is, I, I think, a local limit theorem. And once you can get the local limit theorem, then uh, it, there is a good chance to uh, push uh, this result at uh, criticality. But uh, we believe that uh, local limit theorem doesn't hold at criticality. So in that case, uh, we cannot apply this. So uh, I don't know, maybe uh, equivalence is true at criticality, but uh, we have to uh, change, the, change the method drastically. So now I don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And maybe last question. Uh, so what is your prediction? Uh, should it be stable or version? <laughs> the current uh, prediction is uh, stable. Yeah. Is that one short last question? Okay, if not, let's thank all the speakers of this uh, morning session. Thank you.